Hi, I'm Natasha and I'm a yoga teacher. I've been teaching Hatha Yoga since 2006 and I teach on average 10 classes a week um, made up of one-to-one -one students and also classes. Um, I teach a lot of people with bad backs and also a lot of runners. So they are my particular kind of passions really. Um, and I really believe in how yoga can help you mentally as well as physically. So um, enjoy the videos. Um, there are lots to choose from and hopefully you can kind of do a couple um, at a time. Thank you. Hi, this is a 10 minute standing sequence. So um, to begin standing, it's always nice to, to begin with mountain pose. Um, some forms of yoga will um, make, make kind of insist really on standing with feet hip width apart. Generally in, in Hatha yoga and particularly my, my belief is, is hip width apart is generally more comfortable for adults. It's a little bit kinder to the back and it's better for balance as well. So if you want to stand your feet together, feel free. Okay, personally, I just prefer hip width apart. What is important though is the feet face forwards. Okay, so um, all of us have a favorite foot. Some of us over pronate, turning the toes out, but try to be really conscious of how you stand. Um, everything really begins from the feet upwards. So if your feet are wonky, kind of, you know, you're overusing some parts of your body, underusing others, um, and that the pose will never really be quite right if your foundation is, is squiffy. Okay, so really kind of think about that. Pay a couple of moments at least just to kind of fiddling around, making sure that your feet are nice and strong. Again, I personally like a little bit of softness in the knees. Again, some forms of yoga will insist you kind of press back through those knees. If you really want to do that, that's fine. Personally, I like a, a softness. It takes the pressure off the knees and also off the back. Okay, so adjust as, as you need to. If we can, lift in the pelvic floor so they try to stop yourself going to the loo. Okay, so strengthening through your centre. Try not to squeeze your bottom. Okay, so let the work all be internally. And then the shoulders are back and the palms face the front. And the reason for that is just the opposite of the driving and the texting and the, the, the laptop that we all kind of are on all the time. So this kind of openness will really help with your, your, your posture. And thinking about your head, okay? So again, we probably don't think about this much, but a lot of us poke. And when we're on our mobile phone so much now, we tend to drop so much more. So we're getting overdeveloped muscles, kind of like the top of the back and the shoulders. So think about kind of head facing forward, almost a bad smell under the nose, lifting through the crown of the head. So there's a lot to think about, okay? Just standing in Tadasana. And then just a little bit of movement here. We're going to inhale, take the arms up, look up if you want to, you don't have to though, and exhale and down. And if you like a little bit of a back bend here, then feel free, okay? So just breathing in and up, and breathe out and down. And final time, breathing in and up, and down. So really great for your shoulder mobility. Again, as we get older, really important. And roll the shoulders back. And we're going to take the arms to the sides now. So inhaling and up and down. And again up and down and up and down. Lovely, and shoulders back. So we've got nice strong feet. Let's soften the rest of the body now though. So soft knees, and we're gonna just gently swish here. So we're just going side to side again. It just gently stretching the spine out. Okay, so it's not meant to be dynamic. This is just soft and, and relaxing, just hopefully feels nice. Good, and then back into center. And we are gonna now make the stretches a little bit stronger. So we're gonna come into ragdoll first of all. Okay, so stretching the backs of the legs here. So we're going to inhale, taking the arms up. Look up if you want to, and exhale and forward. So just let yourself hang. So even if you are super flexible, you can get your hands on the floor. Just let it be quite relaxed at first. Maybe hold on to your elbows. The extra weight will help you sink a little bit deeper down. So what I will say to people with this, if it bothers your back, keep softness through your knees, okay? So listen to your body. You can still stretch your body by keeping your knees soft, but you're protecting your back if necessary. Okay, so straight legs is great. Soft legs is equally great. 
so just hang in there and then maybe to come up with those lovely soft kind of relaxed knees relax your arms keeping the knees bent as we inhale and exhale I'm trying to roll up slowly really nice and then we're going to go come into a um, standing forward bend Uttanasana so a little bit stronger now so I'll just turn sideways so you can see a little bit better. So here, again, we've got straight legs if possible, but you can bend the knees um, if, you, if you know that you're gonna to struggle to get your, your feet flat on the floor. Okay, ideally inhaling, looking up, and then exhaling, maybe stick your bottom out, just helps you hinge at the hips and then forward. So the hands are on the floor, if possible, spider in your fingers, okay? and maybe having the hands about a foot forward. So again, check your feet are still facing forward. They're not kind of starting to stick out or lift. And then from here, if possible, we're gonna lift the chin up. So it begins now to flatten the top of the back and think about the hips. If you can press back into those hips, then do. Again, this can all be done with your knees soft. It's absolutely fine. Walk the hands in and hold in the back of the ankles or wherever is comfortable so it might be knees might even be thighs okay bending your legs as necessary and then to come out of this soft knees and up we come nice and strong and taking the legs wide now so wide leg standing forward bend so what we often do in this position is we um kind of turn the toes in or out, or we lift the side of the foot. So really thinking here about big toe out to little toe, okay? Think about lifting your pelvic floor, not sticking your bottom out, okay? So you're really kind of strong and secure. Hands onto the hips and inhale and exhale and forward here. And then hands down onto the floor. So make sure you feel comfortable with your feet. And I'm gonna walk the hands forward slightly. So heels of your hands, on the mat, fingers on the floor, and lift it up if you can. Press back into the hips. Again, the knees can be soft if necessary. And then from here, we're gonna walk the hands back in and keeping the right hand on the floor in front and breathe in and lift in left. Stay with your breath. And exhale, release. And the other side, so left hand on the floor and left. And down. And then holding your ankles if you want to. Let yourself just, just hang down here. And then to come up, we're gonna bend the knees, press into your heels, and up we come slowly. Super, and then step in or jump in yourself back in and having a little, a little wiggle there is always good. Okay, so we're gonna stretch the calves now. So done hamstrings, backs of the legs, and now the calves. So this is um, not very pleasant for some people. So the more flexible you are, the more you're gonna roll your mat. Okay, so um, if you can comfortably do down dog with your heels flat, you can probably roll all of your mat, um, otherwise not quite so much, okay? So rolling your mat as much as is comfortable for you. And then once you've got your mat rolled, toes, balls of foot on the mat, heels on the floor, feet hip width apart, inhaling arms up and exhale and forward. And then you're walking your hands as far forward as you can without your heels lifting, okay? That is the um, caveat, okay? Heels stay down. It's a big stretch for people's calves. Again, you need to keep your knees soft. That's absolutely fine. So just breathe in here. Now when you're ready, lovely soft knees. Walking your hands in, do pause, and up we come again with those knees bent. Really, really important. Unrolling your mat. And we're gonna just finish with a little balance here. So just from here, really simple balance. Literally just inhaling tiptoes and exhaling heels. If you want to then get the arms involved too, then down. So balances are great for us cognitively, really, really good for the feet, 
and the calves and the core. So it's really great to balance daily if possible. A couple of things will help your balance. One is focusing on a drishti on the floor or, or something else in the room. And then just kind of continuing there if you want to. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, there are quite a few to choose from, so it might be really nice to do a sequence um, of three or four each day if you possibly can.